Hi there, and welcome back to another short tutorial. Today we are going to have a follow-up on custom blueprint node, focusing on point processing. I encourage you to watch the previous tutorial on BP nodes, as I will build on top of what we learned there. You can find the link at the top right. Last time, we saw how we could select randomly points in the set. The button shown was a shuffle of the array, then a for each loop, which can be inefficient in blueprint. Today, we're going to see how we can design more efficient nodes when the operation we need to do can be executed on each point in parallel. To do so, we will try to convert a pine color into its HSV equivalent. HSV is another way of storing color, it stands for hue saturation value. The operation is already available with a BP function, so we just need to make sure we can call it for each point. Let's do it. I have set up a simple graph that takes the landscape and sample it and then debug it. By default, when you debug, the debug color is a grayscale according to the point density. We can also use the point color. If you inspect the results, we have points that all have a color white, one, 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 one. To pick a random color, I will apply some noise on my color attribute using the attribute noise node. I only want to affect the RGB component of the color, because we want to keep alpha at 1. So my source will be tonosignColor.rgb, and we want to write back to it, so at source is good. So this will set a random value between 0 and 1 for all of my components. If I inspect the result, you can see that I have random values for the color. Then I can plug the result into the debug node. And in the debug settings, I can change the debug materials to PCG debug material color. This will use the color attribute instead of the density for the color of our debug points. If you don't see it, make sure show plugin content is enabled. And now my debug points all have a random color. In some cases, we want to operate on the HSV representation of the color and not RGB. So we will design a custom blueprint node that will take the color attribute and transform it into another attribute that will contain the HSV representation. Like last time, in my content browser, I create a new blueprint class, inheriting from PCG blueprint element, and I call it PCG color to HSV. To expose it in my PCG node list, in class defaults, make sure it is exposed to library. I also specify a category custom nodes. If I go back to my graph, you can see that I have a new node there. Let's add it. Since we only operate on points, we want to make sure we can only plug points. So in the input and output settings of the blueprint, I uncheck default in out pin and create two custom pins in and out of type points. If I go back to my graph, pins are no points and I can plug the attribute noise output to it. Now we need to override the execute function or execute with context. From there, we do the same thing as last time. We set up our execute function to get all point data we have on input pin in. All output data will be stored in the collection. So we'll create a local variable of type PCG data collection to store the output. And we will pass it to the return node. Now we want to process all input point data. So we will do a for each loop on the input data. But as stated in the previous video, input data is constant in PCG. So we need to create a new point data that we will write to. I will create a current point data local variable of type PCG point data and construct it. And we want to make sure that this data is initialized from the input data so metadata can be propagated to the output. We will also store the result of the HSV conversion in an attribute create a new attribute, we need to get the metadata of the output point data as mutable to modify it. Since the HSV representation is free float values, I'll create a new vector attribute.
the default value will be zero. And I allow the user to change the name of the attribute. So I add a new expose variable of type name. So we'll call it output attribute name and use it for the name of my new vector attribute. And by default, it will be HSV. Now that all is set up, we want to iterate on all the points using a point loop. We can get the context from the get context node. And we iterate on the input data. And we'll store the result in the output data. The output data is then added to the output collection. We've been labeled out. It is also good practice to forward the input tags as when we work with multiple inputs, tags are useful to disentangle the data. The tags are stored on the tag data. So we go back to our get typed input by pin label and we get the data associated with our current input index and break it to get the tags. And then we can plug it in our add to collection node. And when the loop is done, I return the output collection. All right, our main execution function is done. The only remaining thing is to implement the point loop function. To do so, we can override a new function, point loop body. This function will be called on each point and provide us with the context, the in data, the point for this execution, and the output metadata. The return node takes the resulting point that will be added to the output data and the return value. True means that we keep the point and it should be added to the output data. False means we discard the point. So this return value is useful to do some filtering in your input data. In our case, we will keep all our points so the return value will always be true. Now we need to extract the color of our point. So we take our input point and break it. We will only keep the color output Color is a vector four, so we need to break it to reconstruct a linear color from it. From there, we can call the existing function RGB to HSV and make a vector from the result. Now we want to write this value into our attribute. We can call the function set vector attribute for that. It takes as input the value, the attribute name, which is the one we have exposed. It also takes the metadata where this attribute exists, which is our output metadata. And finally, the point. Because inputs are constant in PCG, we can't just plug the input point. We need to make a copy of it. So we create a new local variable output point of type PCG point and copy the input point to it. Then we use this output point into our set vector attribute. And finally plug it into our video node. And that's pretty much it. We can go back to our graph and we can see that the output of our custom node has an attribute HSV with the right values. Let's see about the performances. We can see that our custom node takes around 1.2 milliseconds for 2500 points. Compared to the native node attribute nodes, it took around 0.2 milliseconds, so the native nodes are definitely faster. And that brings us to the same conclusion as last video. Blueprints allows you to prototype nodes quickly but if you are in production environment, it is always a good idea to nativize those nodes when you are satisfied with them. And we are already done. It was a quick follow-up as I didn't have that much to add. But for product processing, the point loop is better than a naive loop in Blueprint. 
I hope it was useful and I see you in the next one. In the meantime, have fun with the plugin. Take care.